Well, we were very excited to see the 2018 ACCAHA cholesterol guidelines come out and uh, they're a nice compilation of all of the data that have come through in the last few years on non-statin therapies being added to statins and benefit has been seen for azetamibe and PCSK9 inhibitors and so those now feature heavily in the guidelines. So it starts again with statin therapy, intensive statin therapy for patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or higher risk patients with diabetes, it's also suggested. Um, and you know, nuances of the statin. But then to check the response and if the LDL remains above 70 if you have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or risk equivalent of 20% ASCVD risk score, if it, the LDL is still above 70 then you go to add azetamibe. And they did then say, and as a third therapy, if you still have a high LDL then you'd add PCSK9. And so nice evidence to see it finally in the guidelines that this stepped approach to try and get the LDLs uh, down uh, is, is terrific. The other thing that they have a big new area in primary prevention incorporating a, a bit more on the risk stratification. So in the prior one it was ASCVD risk score of 7.5 or higher then you start with statin and you discuss maybe before that. Um, if lower risk patients. And they've introduced uh, the idea of using calcium scoring as a way to further differentiate risk in those borderline uh, patients, say 5 to 7.5 percent or 7.5 percent and you're not sure if one should treat, where uh, you'd really consider it if the calcium score was 1 to 99 and, and would treat with a calcium score of 100 or higher and then not treat if it comes out at zero, which it sometimes does. So really nice to see incorporation of this very powerful risk stratification tool. Um, they have a whole list of other factors that can alter risk assessment. LP little a is, is one of them if it's above 50 to, to think about more aggressive treatment. Um, so a very nice, thoughtful uh, thing in primary prevention. And throughout all of it, emphasis on the, the clinician-patient dialogue to work together, to work through any possible side effects and muscle aches, what about compliance and understanding of why we're doing all this and uh, talking through risk. Um, so that of course is at the center of what we do as, as uh, doctors and so to make sure that that is then in the guideline with a whole page of how to make sure you're covering all the bases. Um, so a wonderful new guideline that I think will help all of us manage our patients. Well, I think guidelines have a, an immediate impact that they're widely cited, talked about, and you know we've been anticipating these for a long time. Uh, I think the, the committees have done a very nice job in trying to simplify to the key messages and the key steps so that that makes the implementation easier. Um, the prior guideline was a little more controversial, so people sort of were taken aback that they got away from non-statin therapy and, and goals and so there was more debate on that one. I think this uh, fits our current understanding and all the trials really support it. So I, I would think this will more quickly move into practice and we need it because despite all of our understanding of this, when we look in databases, our patients aren't really managed as optimally as they could be. So hopefully this can, can help us keep moving the ball and, and offer uh, optimal lipid management for all of our patients.